Hi and welcome! In this video, we're going to talk about some new operations with matrices, specifically matrix addition and scalar multiplication. So if you've seen addition and scalar multiplication with vectors, the same sort of thing is going to happen when we start working with matrices. So truthfully, if you didn't have any idea what to do and you just tried to add matrices and multiply them by a scalar, you could probably do it right without this video. But I want to formally explain here how the process works. So for addition, in order to add two matrices A and B, they must have the same dimensions. So we need the same number of elements in each matrix, so we need the same number of rows and the same number of columns, and this should align with what you know about adding vectors. To add vectors, you need to have them in the same dimension, they have to have the same number of components. So as long as we have that, we can add matrices A and B, and we just add the corresponding components. So we can write this out really formally. If you think of A having entries A, I, J, where the first index is the row and the second index is the column, we could add this to a matrix B where we have the same indices. Then what we do is we just take corresponding elements. So to add them, we get a new matrix. We take A11 plus B11. So we're adding those first entries. Then we would continue on and add all of the corresponding entries. So whatever matches up in each spot is what we add together. So this just means that our i jth entry of the new matrix that we get when we add the two matrices together is just a i j plus b i j. You just add the elements that go together that have the same indices. We'll see an example of this in a moment, but let's talk about scalar multiplication first. So in order to multiply a matrix A, by a real valued scalar alpha, we just multiply each component of A by alpha. So if I have alpha times the matrix A, this is going to be alpha times our general matrix where the entries are A, I, J. Then we just distribute alpha into each of the entries. So we'd have alpha A11, alpha A12, alpha A21, etc. to fill in the whole matrix. So pretty straightforward, you just multiply all of the elements by the scalar. So we can add matrices and we can multiply them by a scalar, but we can also technically subtract matrices. However, we do this by actually just using a combination of the two operations we already talked about. This technicality isn't super important at this point, but I just like to highlight it because this corresponds with some more higher level math ideas that we're really using just these two operations. So if we think of A minus B, we could actually rewrite this as the matrix A plus, so just addition, and then negative one as a scalar times the matrix B. So this is just a different way to think about A minus B. We would think of it as the matrix A plus negative one of the matrix B. So this is a complicated way to think about this, but in practice, we simply just subtract the corresponding elements of the matrices in the same way we would add them for addition. All right, let's go through some examples. So let's compute A plus C, 3B, and C minus 1 half A. And let's consider the matrices A equals 2, 6, 8, 4, B equals 0, negative 1, 4, 3, 5, negative 2, and C equals 2, 0, 1, negative 1. So before we get into doing the examples, I just want to note that we can't add A with B or C with B, so that's why we're only doing the A and C together, and this is because B has different dimensions. So both A and C are 2 by 2, but the matrix B is 2 by 3, and so we can't add or subtract it with the matrices that have the different dimensions. All right, this example is pretty straightforward, so I'd recommend pausing right now if you're interested and if you're following along, and do this on your own and see what you get as your solutions. Then we can come back and do it together. All right, so first we're gonna do A plus C. I write out the matrix A plus the matrix C, and then I'm just going to add corresponding elements. So I have two plus two, six plus zero, eight plus one, and four plus negative one. And then I simplify. So I'm getting four, six, nine, three, 
and this is my new matrix that's the sum of the two other matrices. All right, next let's do 3 times b. So we're taking this scalar 3 and multiplying it by the matrix b, and I'm just going to distribute 3 into each of the terms. So I have 3 times 0, 3 times negative 1, 3 times 4, 3 times 3, 3 times 5, 3 times negative 2, and then I simplify. So my resulting matrix is 0, negative 3, 12, and 9, 15, negative 6. Simple as that. Okay, lastly, let's do C minus 1 half A. So I'm going to put the matrix C and then subtract 1 half of the matrix A. I'll first distribute that 1 half into my terms. So I'm going to multiply all of the terms of A by 1 half, which is dividing them by 2. So now I'm left with the matrix C minus the matrix 1, 3, 4, 2. Now we just need to subtract the corresponding elements. So I do 2 minus 1, 0 minus 3, 1 minus 4, and negative 1 minus 2. Then simplifying, I'm getting the new matrix 1, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. And there we go. That's our matrix C minus 1 half A. All right, so that's just a quick video to show you that the operations addition and scalar multiplication work just as you expect with matrices. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.